I really wish we talked more about this predator who had more impact than any man I can think of. Les Moonves. This man did just as much damage, if not more, than Harvey Weinstein. I'd even argue more. I'm gonna tie a bunch of stuff together, so bear with me. So I'm a Gen X, and I grew up watching shows like Murphy Brown. I even wore, you know, shoulder pads because of her. And designing women. In fact, I wrote about designing women uh, for Glamour Magazine a few years ago about how it was a show ahead of its time. That with like the facts of life, Roseanne, growing pain, who's the boss? Da 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 da. Like I was raised by a single mom and I was surrounded by TV shows with super strong female leads who are either single moms, but they're all like working moms. And a lot of them were very successful. And then everything changed. The 90s is when we saw um, Girls Gone Wild, MTV Spring Break, all this crap, right? We also saw the rise of Copaganda and a bunch of shows based on dead women, graped, unalived women. And we saw a bunch of misogynistic sitcoms because there's one man who had the power to greenlight those shows and kill all the other shows. Like Murder, She Wrote and Star Trek and stuff like that too. And it was Les. Not only did this man do immeasurable damage, somebody who has worked in the film industry on crews, who has been in entertainment for a long time, who's even pitched a show to production companies. So I like know how a lot of this work. I mean, I'm not in thick in it, but a lot of my friends are because, you know, I grew up in the comedy world in New York through the Upright Citizen Brigade. And then I lived in LA for a while. The people who green light shows have more power than God. Like, I don't even believe in God, but whatever. And they also have a God complex. And a lot of them are schmedual predators. And a lot and a lot of them are unbelievably racist and all the bad things, right? This guy is one of them. Now, before I go into just what a terrible man this is in his personal life, think about the impact of someone like me as a kid watching show after show after show of like really inspiring women. And then women born maybe 10 years after me growing up watching this. I actually have never watched this show and I'm so glad I haven't because this dude sounds like worse than Ross <laughs> from Friends. I've also never watched this show because every time I try, I was like, how are these dorks getting hot women who are just as smart as them? Like this to me is like Revenge of the Nerds, but like on acid. Unless we forget this nightmare, another show that I refused to watch, but every time I tried, I was horrified. And this man is also um, an abuser. And like, we know this man is bad news. And they replaced him with another abuser who is, um, you know, into teenagers. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I've done several, several videos on Ashton. I fully believe that man's a predator. You are the company you keep and his friends are all predators. And then in addition to seeing sitcoms like that, that are very misogynistic, all these shows. Now granted, I actually loved these shows because I love mystery. But it started to disturb me that I started to like think cops are great people. <laughs> like this is all propaganda, y'all. They have it in Vegas, they have it in Miami, New York. I mean, this whole CSI thing, ha I don't even, like, how many hundreds of hours are filled of like serial unalivers? You know, because it's almost always like men unaliving women and then them figuring out who did it. Who did it? And I'm sorry, I loved this show too, but I actually had to stop watching Criminal Mind because it was so disturbing. I felt really bad consuming so many hours of basically children and women being unalived by psychos. Like I think the Marinette episode, like that, that was like, I was like, I'm done, I cannot. Other shows that went, were greenlit during um, that man's tenure, Top Cops, whatever that is. Everybody loves Raymond. Raymond sucks. Nobody should love Raymond. <laughs> and I'm, I'm kidding, but still. Uh, another Cosby show? Like, it doesn't surprise me that Les was like, yeah, Cosby. You know, I think Predators are like, hmm, something about you feels right. <laughs> now, so the, I, I don't even know, and it's not just in the US. When I moved to Spain, I was shocked that almost all the shows on TV that were not actually from produced and made in Spain were um, Big, Big Bang Theater, uh, whatever it's called, the nerd one, Two and a Half Men, and all the CSI shows. So it's not just in the United States. This one man had the power to change what people all over the world were consuming. And when 
and then when most shows are written by white men, for white men, and directed by white men, and funded by white men, and greenlit by white men, and then you find out that that white man hates women, and he really hates black women, because that man was also behind ruining Janet Jackson's career, along with Justin Timberlake, for that guy. Oh, he was also behind Survivor, Big Brother, and all of these reality shows that are like, mm, definitely, they're not designing women, if you catch my drift. So after um, Nipplegate, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's when Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake um, performed together in the Super Bowl. I gotta do a whole video about that. That story alone will make you hate Justin. And then after hearing everything Britney had to say, um, Justin's days of like being thought of as like a nice guy, I hope are over. That dude just uses women. So um, Moonves was obsessed with ruining Janet Jackson's career. Now remember, it was Justin who exposed her nipple on live television. But Janet is the only one who paid a price for that. Justin got to go on and, 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 and thrive. And Janet and Jackson actually liked him and like was helping him in his career and he totally screwed over. Gotta hate him. So Les wanted an apology from both of them. He didn't like Janet's apology. It was insufficient. So he put her on a blacklist. He blacklisted her music. He um, ruined a lot of her career opportunities. She was supposed to be on the Grammy Awards, but he like he ruined everything she was supposed to do. And uh, Timberlake was supposed to be on the Grammys too. And he went up to Les and cried and was like, I'm so sorry. So he got a pass. This man is also responsible for Donald Trump. Now, I actually blame all the media that made money off of this idiot because of ratings. I blame all of the executives at these media companies who just love Donald Trump because they made money. This, this dude even admitted out loud. He's the one famous for saying, it may not be good for America, but it's damn good for CBS. Who would have expected the ride we're all having now? The money's rolling in and this is fun. I've never seen anything like this. And this is gonna be a good year for us. Sorry, it's a terrible thing to say, but bring it on, Donald, keep going. Donald's place in this election is a good thing. I'm not saying that Donald Trump wouldn't have won without him and all the other enablers who were like, and who were so greedy and making money off him and his, you know, ratings. But this man's greed gave us four years of one of the most dangerous men who's ever been in power in the U.S., which not only affect foreign policy and people all over the world, but now we have a Supreme Court that really hates women thanks to uh, Donald. So thank you, Les. Thank you. Oh, and wouldn't you know, like so many men in Hollywood, once Me Too hit Hollywood, he was like, oh, he was such a big supporter. It's a watershed moment. CBS Cares released public service announcements, blah, blah, until, God bless his soul, Rowan Farrow came into this man's life. In July of 2018, he came out with a New Yorker piece with six women, beautifully reported story, who accused less of... Like, you gotta look these up. It's, I can't even go into this stuff now. It's also super triggering because this man is awful. If that wasn't enough, <laughs> came out with another one in September 2018 with six more women. That's 12. And that's when this dude lost his job. Now, do y'all remember um, E. Jean Carroll who accused uh, Donald Trump of grape? She also puts less on blast in her piece. She thinks he's just as bad as Trump. But if you really want to understand how powerful this man is, I highly suggest this, po this piece for The Hollywood Reporter. Um, this writer, Linda Bloodworth uh, Thomason, I don't know if I'm saying her name right, she is responsible for designing women. And this piece was the first time I realized just how much power one man can have. This piece, it, it, it lives rent free in my head. This is my Roman Empire, y'all. And she wrote this piece because she wanted people to understand. What's really important about this piece is it, it, it shows you just how much this man is just as dangerous, if not more so, than Harvey. Because at least Harvey was putting movies out in the world that maybe seemed a little feminist. This man not only was graping women and ruining women's careers like her, he created the content that we all had to consume for decades. Despite 12 allegations, he will never go to jail and he's hiding behind his wife and rebranding himself through her. I'm not done yet. Like and comment for part two. Also, if you really appreciate this work, it takes me hours to research this. My Venmo is up here. Any extra love would always be greatly appreciated.